This All conference members. will now be recorded. So, um, yeah. okay, let's, we can begin. Okay. So, uh, welcome you all uh, to this session on uh, S4 HANA security as well as Puri security. Uh, let me start by introducing myself. Okay, my name is uh, Raghu. I have uh, close to 13 plus years of experience all in the area of SAP infrastructure security. When I say infrastructure security, it, 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 uh, it encompasses everything, uh, be it ECC, be it S4 HANA, GRC, Success Factor, PORE, BIHCM. So I have worked on all those areas. Uh, I am also certified on uh, CyberArk PIMPAM. I'm, uh, I have briefly worked as a PIMPAM consultant for CyberArk. And uh, I have worked on a couple of Greenfield implementations. I hope you all are aware of uh, the terminology which I'm using here. Greenfield is like from scratch implementation. I have also been part of uh, one Brownfield, uh, which is uh, earlier it was called as migration. Now uh, the terminology we use is Brownfield implementation. And I have done numerous upgrades and rollouts. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember the count of how many upgrades and uh, rollouts I have done, but I have done a lot. And uh, I do have experience in AMS, which is Application Man Management Services uh, experience as well. And um, as you can see, I have uh, the areas of expertise listed out there. So uh, that is my brief introduction. So I'm based out from Bangalore and uh, I'll be your guide uh, for this training on S4 HANA and Fiori. So uh, I would like to begin with understanding the crowd over here. So can you please introduce yourself? Tell me uh, what is your experience? What have you been working on? And what are your expectations out of this training material or training course? Uh, hey, hi, I'm Nitish Ranjan from Bangalore. Um, basically, uh, I have 14 years of experience in SAP itself, uh, out of which uh, eight, uh, eight plus years I worked for SAP basis. Then later mm -hmm. on, I moved to SAP security. Uh, presently, I'm working for uh, uh, one of the MNC company uh, for SAP security and BA, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Bob security and ECC security. Presently, I'm looking for uh, SAP uh, a Fury security concept, but majorly I wanted to know why these people, like uh, most of the people, are differentiating between SAP HANA DB and SAP S4 HANA security. Uh, if you can brief us in in the uh, little more on this particular topic, uh, it's good. Definitely, to understand. definitely, Thank Nitish. Thank you. Thank you for your intro. So, uh, uh, Ram Krishna, I can see a few names here. So if you can introduce yourselves as well and your expectation of the course. Let us start with uh, Shiva Krishna. Hey, hi, Raga. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, myself, Shiva Krishna. I am having uh, around seven years of experience in SAP security and GRC. And mm -hmm. just I started uh, working on uh, Fury S4 Fury with uh, uh, I mean not S4 Fury S4 Ana with Fury just have start learning. So as I meant to say that uh, I am zero knowledge on that. So if you start anything, that would be I mean, anything is fine for me. Great, we are here to help you. Not a problem. You are in the right place. Okay. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Shiva. So. Um, Anyone else want to introduce yourself? Soumya, I see a couple of names. Uh, yeah, hi, Raghu. Uh, this is Soumya. Like, I have uh, eight years of experience in SAP security and GRC. So I've worked. Can you? Uh, uh, I'm. I can hardly hear you. Uh, is it audible now? Yes, crystal clear. Yeah. Uh, I have eight years of experience in SAP security, uh, like GCC, uh, ECC, GRC implementations and all I have done. And uh, native, I have worked on native HANA. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for S4 HANA and Fiori security. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Hi, this is Ravinder Nala. I have an experience of 14 years of SAP security and GRC. I implemented uh, three GRC implementations, uh, working many projects, and uh, the core knowledge in security. I'm looking for now 
HANA related Espora, and HANA, and Furia and GRC12. Great, great, great to know that. Okay, I think we can begin. So I barely understand the, I uh, kind of understand the mood of the uh, the group over here. So everybody is having experience. So that is very good uh, when it comes to training. So it is easier to train people who are already working on it. Okay, so let's begin. So let me first uh, tell you what S4 HANA security is all about. Okay, S4 HANA security, when we say S4 HANA security is less on the application and more on the database. So when we when when you're expecting uh, someone to know S4 HANA security, it is implied that they are looking for someone who can work on the database security. Okay, so earlier uh, the model was different. So we had a different database along with uh, uh, the the application layer being sap so the applic sap application layer security was entirely different and the database was managed uh, say if the database is oracle so there was an oracle db administrator who used to do all the security activities uh, on the database so <clears throat> in changing words today so uh, a sap security consultant is, is expected to work on hana database security as well okay so this course is modeled on, on a similar fashion. So uh, the application security. So to answer uh, uh, Nitish's question. So in in the application part of S4 HANA, the security remains almost the same. So the only change would be uh, the T codes which you get, uh, the obsolete T codes which will be gone. But the core concept of the application security, it remains the same BTCC or on S4 HANA. But the way it works along with the database, the internal functionalities uh, of uh, the working with the database, which differs. And uh, that uh, for a security consultant uh, is not that important when it comes to, uh, uh, when you compare that with the HANA DB security. So today, uh, the expectation of the market is that you know how to administer uh, the privileges or the roles or the views on the database rather than on the application layer itself. On the application layer, it remains intact. I mean, the, the technology, the role concepts, the user concept, the transport mechanism, everything remains the same on the application, okay? The only change from S4 to ECC, from ECC to S4 is the new functionality, which you get in any upgrades, okay? So if uh, there is a new service patch upgrade, you are expecting uh, a lot of new T codes to come into picture, a lot of old T codes going obsolete, uh, being, uh, being not in use or being non-executable so that remains the same okay the application parts kicks in when we get fiori into the picture so fiori is an application it is an extension of s4 hana suite okay so when we when you talk about the s4 hana suite so fiori comes along with it and that is the application part of it okay we will be covering the fiori security as well which is the application part of the security and we will be covering the s4 hana database security Okay, so does that answer your questions, uh, Nitish? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me go through the agenda of the entire course. So how we will be structuring it. So we will begin with uh, the introduction to HANA. So I believe everyone, everybody, everyone in the room are aware, are aware of what S4 HANA or SAP HANA is, but I am considering that you're, you guys are new to it. So I'll be beginning with what makes HANA so special. Okay, what is the architecture which lays behind SAP HANA, which makes it so successful in the market today that everybody is itching to uh, get a piece of HANA. Okay, so we will start, we will uh, get through that uh, session today. Okay, then later on in the coming sessions, we will look at the tools which are available in S4 HANA. Or when I say S4 HANA, it is the suite. When I talk about HANA, that is the, the platform which you'll be working on. Okay, so my approach or my take on this training curriculum is that we install everything okay although you may consider it as a basis activity but trust me as a security consultant i know how important it is to understand the inner workings of all the tools which which are at which are at on the plate okay so we will start by seeing what a hana studio is okay how do we get hana studio on our hands okay we will also see what a dba cockpit or a database cockpit is okay 
and uh, we will we will install sorry for that so uh, we will see uh, hana studio we will see the database cockpit we will see the cloud uh, console which sap has provided okay so we will start freshly okay we don't have any pre-installed software we will install everybody I, I expect everyone to install along with me we will create our own databases we will create our own information view right from the scratch okay so that is my take on how we learn things uh, related to related to hana security okay so once we are through with the hana tools uh, we will go into much more technical details uh, say the information views okay so there are multiple information views uh, inform uh, attribute view analytic view calculation view there are other decision tables as well we will look into that those as well okay so that will we will create these information views with our own database which we have created okay i can give you a sample database as well the simplest of all or you can come up with your own database you can upload it on to our hana uh, uh, database and then work with your own data so you are you have a free hand okay so then we will move into uh, the sap hana security part okay so when i say sap hana security it is the database security and how do we secure uh, the accesses for the database and to the database okay so the ways of controlling uh, the access onto the database is done through privileges it is done through roles so we will look into more details about what privileges and how different it is when it when you compare that with the application part so you are aware of all pfcg roles and all so how different a privilege works uh, when you compare it or when you when you match it with uh, uh, the already known application part of it okay so we will look into all the different types of uh, privileges the system privilege object privilege package privilege uh, the most important of these privileges is the analytical privilege the one which you will be creating okay the system privileges and object privileges we will get a brief of it because it is provided it is already available okay it doesn't mean that you cannot create it but sap has provided a standard set we will look into more detail when we but we will cross that bridge when we are there okay so analytical privileges will be a very important topic for all security consultants okay so we will also look at how a role is built on hana okay what are the types of role what type of role is used at what time so those kind of things uh, will be understanding in the role concept session of sap hana security then we will look into our daily bread and butter which is user management we will see how it is created how the access provisioning is done and all those all your questions related to user management activities uh, then uh, there is an important topic on transport mechanism there is a, a difference in the transport mechanism uh, one which you are not aware of okay so uh, how you do it on application you just bundle it in a transport release the transport it will Take, it can be taken up by charm or omg or any other tool or it is manually transported into different systems uh, in our application security but on s4 hana or a hana suite the transport mechanism differs there are multiple types of hana uh, you have change in transport systems over here you have htc which is uh, hta which is hana transports for abap there are different types of transport mechanisms available in hana we will uh, go into much details uh, when we reach there then uh, i'll touch upon few things uh, which we are not directly involved in but we will we'll be going to use which is authentication methods there are different authentication methods so when i say authentication so uh, it can be a third party authentication like kerberos or saml or x509 or it can be sap provided authentication which is like user id password you have assertion tickets there are a lot of things when it comes to authentication methods so authentication methods we are going to going to grace uh, the surface of it because as a security consultant we don't have to know the internal workings of it although we have to know but we are not going to do it hands-on uh, for uh, any any setup for kerberos or saml or user id password or anything related to authentication methods so we will you we will know how we can use uh, the available technology and designing our users and their accesses okay and in the later sections of uh, uh, the S4 HANA security, we will answer all your questions. What are the administrative tasks which we do on security? Um, what are how how do we do different activities, the day-to-day -day activities, the user access provisioning, the password policies, uh, the ownership 
uh, object ownership, the traces, uh, which works differently on HANA. So uh, we will look into all those along with whatever you come up with, whatever questions you have, we will be glad to answer. So that is the structure of uh, S4HANA security. Okay. So when I say S4HANA security, so this is what I'll be covering in this training session. So uh, any, any questions on this? Do you have anything to clarify? Or was your expectation something else and it turned out to be something else? Please let me know. <clears throat> okay, I can take the silence as yes and I'll, I'll continue. So, okay, so moving on to UI5 Fiori security. So this is where we come into the application layer. Okay, so Fiori being an application, which is an add-on uh, to S4HANA. So we will look into what exactly is Fiori, okay? How it is being marketed by SAP as the new phase of uh, ERP or enterprise resource planning. So it, Fiori has become the new phase of how uh, people are looking into uh, the ERP systems these days. So uh, we will look into that. We will look into how it can be deployed on top of HANA. Okay, there are multiple ways of deployment. Okay, there are hybrid, there are hub deployment, there are on-premise deployment. So we will look into those kind of uh, details uh, in the deployment options for Fiori. Then we will see how exactly we are going to use the Fiori interface in personalizing it for the user. Okay. So we will see the launchpad, we will see the designer, we will see the launchpad personalization options which are available for Fiori, okay? And then we will uh, dig deeper technically as a security consultant, we will look into how we build access around the Fiori, okay? So how we are going to categorize the apps which are available. When I say apps, these are Fiori apps, not your Android or Apple apps. So these work differently, okay? How it feels, how it looks on the system, how the user sees it on the system, how an administrator see them on the system, how you can configure, what are the details available, okay? All those details will be covered under the design part of Fiori, okay? We will also see, we will look into uh, what SAP has provided, which is called Fiori Apps Library, okay? We will look into what is provided by SAP. It's an extensive set of applications which is provided by SAP. So. Uh, in a real-time scenario, I've been working with Fiori for past three and a half, four years now, almost you can say five, uh, where I have hardly come across any custom apps being created by the web team, okay? So everything is included in the Fiori apps library. We will also see the options to explore creation of the new apps as well. I, I, I'm not running away from that, but I'm just giving you a real-time example over here. Okay, then we will understand uh, the deeper concepts of modeling a Fiori uh, authorization. So what are groups and what are catalogs? How, what is a gateway server? What is the backend server? It depends on how, how it is deployed. So how are we going to configure these apps and catalogs into our roles? What is a OData service? Okay, all those things comes into picture when we talk about the authorization provisioning for Fiori. Okay, then uh, we will have Troubleshooting, there are a couple of key codes which you need to know. Uh, how do you troubleshoot a given uh, error? We will look into the errors. We will also look into how to fix those errors. And uh, we will also look at uh, the Fiori service library. So there is uh, there is a service catalog where you see that, okay, these are the services listed. How, what is the action taken? What are the details given? What a basis administrator have configured for that particular app? So we will look into all those details and that will complete our uh, Fiori security. We will then take up your queries, your uh, take on uh, uh, these things and we will answer all your doubts. So uh, does that look good? Am I audible? Yep. Yes. That's great. So, Okay, so uh, I want this to be an interactive session so so that I uh, I don't end up being talking alone. So I want you guys to be interacting. I'm not a trainer. As I mentioned, I am your guide. So you guys are already trained on SAP security. I'll be guiding you through the things. So consider me as your guide and I want your feedback along with the training so that we make it a more interactive session. 
Are you guys with me? Yeah, no. yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay, so uh, let's kickstart this. Uh, we will look into the introduction to SAP HANA. So what do you think SAP HANA is? So can you, uh, any one of you tell me what a what HANA base is? What a, what a SAP HANA actually is? And how do you look at it? Anyone? So I see Lalita unmute herself. So you can you can go ahead and say it. There is no I right or wrong answer in this. Database is the right thing. Database is like uh, important one thing in the database engine. Okay. Okay, that's good. So SAP HANA is a database. Okay, it's plain and simple. It is a database like Oracle or DB2 or MaxDB, but there is a big difference. There is a big difference between a traditional database and a HANA database, okay? So HANA is an acronym, stands for High Performance Analytical Appliance, okay? So SAP promises the highest possible performance with HANA and they also deliver on it. So it's not a fake promise where they make and run away, but uh, we have actually seen that in action, the high performance, it is being delivered by SAP HANA database. So right now, I may, I may refer HANA as a database, but later on you will understand that HANA is not just a database, it will act as a platform, okay? I'll, I'll explain myself as the course uh, uh, forwards, okay? So you will understand why HANA is not just a database and it is a platform for applications, okay? So let's see what makes HANA so special and what stands, makes it stand out from the traditional database system. So I believe every one of you have uh, checked online what HANA is. The first word you get into, into, into your screen is that HANA is an in-memory database, right? So let's see what an in-memory database actually means, okay? I am trying to simplify it as much as possible, okay? So we are not going too deep into technical things, which may confuse you at the end. Okay, so I'm keeping the architecture part as simple and as relevant as possible. Okay, so I may go into more details, but I personally believe uh, it, it may not be required to understand that much depth of technical understanding when it comes to the architecture part. We are engineers, uh, we, are, we work on the end product, and uh, uh, we, we should be satisfied with uh, whatever we see and whatever we can work with. Okay, so that is my take on it. Uh, you can let me know if you differ from it. Okay, so let me explain what an in-memory database actually is. I'll give you an analogy of uh, how in-memory actually is. So let's take a, a worker here. Okay, uh, so this is an office going guy uh, who's with his laptop on his table. Let's call him uh, Praveen. Okay, so uh, he gets a lot of queries, okay, relating to uh, his work. So people come to his desk, and ask him, okay, give me that detail, give me that data, give me that report, blah, blah, blah. So he gets a lot of queries in his day, uh, a normal day at work. So what Praveen does, depending on the query, he goes to the book rack or the file shelf, uh, which is, is there in his office. He fetches the right data. I mean, he fetches the right book or the file. He gets them on the table and he fetches or he processes the, the query, which he gets. So if you, map this to our technical and technical terms so the bookshelf is the database okay the table is the memory when i say memory uh, you can consider that as your ram or the random access memory which is uh, which is, which you have on your phones on your on your uh, desktops or laptops which is the same for any database engine so you have a, a memory which is random access so let's consider the table as his memory and praveen himself as the processor okay so don't you think it is very difficult for praveen for every time to get to the database fetch the book and file bring it onto the table and run the query okay is don't you think it's a tedious job so i think it was a tedious job it is a tedious job and similarly sap also thought of this problem okay so why not it, will it will it not be great if you get all the books which are in the rack onto his table directly Okay. Will it not be easier for Praveen to access those books if it is on his table? 
he don't have to get up from his seat okay he can just take, take the book whichever is needed and then process the query okay i understand the number of books here is a lot okay so it will be a problem to bring all those books onto the table so why not compress those tables or why not compress those data and make it shorter and more accessible without compromising the integrity of the data like without losing any information how we can compress those books and bring a, a, a the set of books which are relevant onto the memory so that's exactly what hana does okay so it takes the data which is in the database it compresses it and brings it on to the memory okay now the table becomes our in memory okay that is the simplest way of understanding how the hana database works okay uh, is that clear so far guys i need yes or no at least so that i can proceed yes sir okay so uh, this is what uh, in memory database uh, concept is so you bring all the data when i say all the data there is a catch over there so you cannot bring everything which is on the database onto the memory so you may say that that will make the memory expensive i mean you need a huge memory right so but there is a work around there is there is uh, technologies in place which will uh, answer these questions so it will make memory more accessible and more faster we will see we will uh, before going into the deeper part of the architecture we will see what makes the architecture special okay so there are a couple of things which you need to understand before we run into the architecture part so let's let's look at those things so uh, hana supports both row and column store methodologies okay what is a row and column store so uh, in database this is the common terminology which is used so how is the table saved okay so table can either be saved in a row store or it can be stored in a column store so traditional databases like oracle or sql c sql db they all work on row store methodologies okay so every table is stored in a row and sap hana optimizes the column store uh, methodology of saving the tables so we will see what a row store and a column store actually is okay so let's begin with the row store uh, i'm taking a small database here okay so this database has uh, the row id uh, sorry the the id uh, it has the names of the students and it it lists out the books which these users or these students have taken okay so uh, this is this is just a technical representation of how a table looks so this is how you see the table on your excel right but this is not exactly how it is saved on the database okay so database do not save the information as you look at it as you see the data it is not exactly how it is saved on the data so the row and column store are mechanism of how the data is saved so you see this is a column and this is a row so when in a row store this is how exactly the records are saved so it will take the first row and make it as record one it will take the second row make it as record two and it will take the third row and make it as record three okay let's uh, uh, throw this throw this particular store uh, a simple query okay now i want the list of all students who have borrowed books it doesn't matter what what order or what book they have borrowed i just want the list of students okay so this is the query which i am going to run now in a row store look at how many records the processor has to parse right so every name is in the three records so to get all three names i need to parse through all the three records okay so three records okay parsing through three records it is time consuming so i am taking the simplest of the database here when you compare it to the actual database it goes thousands of tens, tens of thousands of lines of tens of thousands of records to go through to fetch a simplest of the data which is available okay so here in a row store you need to parse through all three records to get the result for the query okay so let's look at how this can be overcome using a column store so i'm taking the same database okay and how the data is saved in column store okay now what the storing does is it will take all the columns and make it as one record each okay now 
the serial numbers are in one record the names are in one record the books are in one record okay now if i run the same query i just have to pass through one record which is record number two and i will get my desired output if i want to get the list of books which are borrowed doesn't matter which student it is i just have to rec uh, pass through record number three okay don't you think it is much more efficient this way when it compared when you when you when you map it with row storage so it is definitely more credible and more fast when it comes to retrieval of data right so you may ask a question that in some scenarios a row store may be better of course it is better in some scenarios but when you look at a database say if you have a table with 200 columns the query which you run on such tables do not require all the columns in their result okay suppose if you have a citizenship database okay you have the serial number you have the name last name full name email address gender you have the occupation you have the annual income you have the aadhar number pan number telephone number so many columns every every uh, variable here is a column right so if i want to run a query on uh, the phone number i don't have to go through all the columns right so that's what column store does i can run the query on only select columns and get the output in that way column store is optimum when it comes to performance okay so that that's the simplest way of explaining a row and column store so do you have any questions over here any db administrators in the room probably they will have questions i will be happy to answer them okay no rook. great so let's move on so uh, let's take a look at another uh, important concept uh, uh, for sap hana which makes it stand out okay which is called compression so as i said bringing all the books on praveen's table may be a tedious job which may increase the load on the memory which is directly proportional to the cost to the company which is which is called pco the total cost of ownership will increase if the memory is burdened with a lot of data so how does sap hana overcome this situation right so they use a wonderful compression methodology okay so uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, algorithms which they use uh, something like trex okay which is like retrieval data retrieval part uh, there are a lot of MaxDB applications. MaxDB is a SAP owned database which uh, which uses the same compression technology and which sits in, inside uh, the engine of HANA. Okay, so let's see how exactly a data is compressed and saved onto the memory. Okay, let's take a brief look at that. Okay, so I'm taking an example of a similar kind of a database here. Okay, so I have uh, the row number, the the sorry, the uh, number, the serial number. I have the students and I have the books which they have borrowed. Okay, as you can see, <clears throat> sorry, the names of the students have repeated. So Rohan is repeated twice, Suresh is repeated twice, Subhash and Samir once. And uh, similarly, the books are also repeated. So Java is repeated three times, SAP twice, and C once. So uh, the optimum way of uh, compressing this information without losing the integrity is to remove the duplicates but also save the essence <coughs> excuse me so also save the essence of the data which means to say what i mean to say here is so i need to compress remove the duplicates compress this table and then save it in a different table without losing the information which is available on the screen right now okay that is part number one part number two is you need to understand the type of data which is saved okay so as you see rohan Suresh, Java, C++, these are string types, okay? String types are much more expensive when it comes to, when it com when it is compared to integer types, okay? Suppose a first name or a, a name of a person takes up 50 bytes of data, uh, integer can take up 22 bits of data. So that's, that's a huge difference when it comes to large databases, okay? So why not assign an integer to every string over here, okay? So what I'll do is I'll create a vector table, okay, and assign an integer to the unique students, okay. So as you can see, I have assigned integer one to Rohan, integer two to Suresh, integer three to Samir, four to Subhash. So now I have 
eliminated the duplicates and I have assigned the integer to each and every student. And I'm going to do a similar thing for the books as well. Okay, so this will be my vector table, the tables for referencing. Now, if I superimpose this particular information onto my actual data, I'll see something like this. Okay, so now you see I have eliminated all the string types. Okay, and I have replaced them with integers. Although you see the duplicates here, but the record storing, when it comes to the record storing, the duplicates will be removed and it will be mapped to the vector table and the query will be run. Okay, it may not look as fancy or as convincing a data store data compression methodology but let's take a look at the a real world example over here okay so let's say uh, take the population of karnataka five crore uh, uh, to round it off so, so 50 million people stay in karnataka so i have a database of all 50 million people and uh, let's let's only consider their first names okay so approximately Mm, the name the string type name takes up 50 bytes of data okay every name takes up 50 bytes of data so if i calculate that okay my storage space will be close to 350 gigabytes to save five crore first names okay five crore first names will take up up to 350 gb so now if i apply the compression methodology which is available here so I will remove the duplicates. Let's say like 50 lakh unique first names are existing in Karnataka. That's that's an example. Okay. So I have 50 lakh unique first names. Okay. So and I assign an integer which takes up 23 bytes of 23 bits of data. I'm sorry, 23 bits of data to save every integer and then do a cross calculation. So I will get a 20 GB of actual data plus 200 MB of my vector table. So what is my total? storage here it is close to 21 gb okay so you can see it on the screen so the compression rate which hana provides uh, what which, which hana promises is 20x but what we can actually see is more than 15x of compression rate that is outstanding okay so instead of so if you have 100 gb of data it can be saved in 6 gb of space so don't you think it's astounding it's it's a exponential uh, compression rate when it comes to HANA. So this is how uh, the they reduce the total cost to the owner, total cost of ownership onto the memory, right? So memory will have less load uh, when it comes to compression. There are other me mechanisms to in decrease the load onto the memory. We will see it when we are working actually on the database. Okay. So any 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 doubts over here? Uh, you are talking about that vector table concept, right? Uh, whether it yes. is uh, uh, implemented in HANA dat uh, database or you are taking as example? No, it is. It is implemented in HANA. Okay. So we have a vector table, which is called as a reference table sometimes. And uh, those kind of uh, met methodologies are used when you run the query. So when you run the query, it is not actually on the table which is actually on the compressed table mapped along with the vector table. Hmm. So that's okay. how a query is run internally inside the HANA DB. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let's let's yeah, uh, both let's okay. not take uh, in the first exa real world example. First one is 50 million mm -hmm. and the second one we have calculated only for 5 million. So that is the I am taking out all the duplicates. Okay, 50 million people do not have unique names, right? So you may have like lakhs of Raghus or lakhs of Lalitas in Karnataka, right? I'm negating all those duplicates and I'm only considering the unique ones and I'm assigning a vector to it. Okay. 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 Yeah. So uh, as we know, okay, I can move on, right? Okay. Thank you. So uh, as we know, all the internal mechanisms of what makes it special, now let's look into the architecture part. So when I'm talking about architecture, I am talking it in very simple terms, okay? I will also touch upon the MDC concept. We will look into what MDC actually is, okay? So uh, this is a traditional system, okay? So initially you have a database. 
say it any traditional database oracle db2 sql db anything right and on top of the oracle on top of the database you have our application layer okay it can be sap ecc it can be oracle financials it can be jd edwards it can be anything okay it sits on top of the database which forms our second layer which is the application layer and then we have the third layer which is the presentation layer which the end users use so this is our traditional three tier architecture right this was existing in our traditional systems so now what sap hana has done what sap hana has done when i say sap hana is not just a database and it is a platform this is where sap hana becomes a platform right it encompasses or it it takes up everything which is in the application layer and embeds into itself right so all our applications are now inside the database it is that the database the memory and the application is bundled into one and it forms the first layer of our new system and the only other layer is the presentation layer so traditionally from traditional two tier three tier architecture we are moving into a two tier architecture which is exactly what hana promises and it this is what increases the speed of hana and this is what decreases the total cost of ownership for any clients okay so this is the simplest way of understand there is a lot of technical architectures which may confuse you so i am i am taking that all off i am giving you the simplified view of the architecture so it is moving from a traditional three tier architecture into a two tier architecture for sap hana okay so let's look into a little more uh, in depth understanding of the architecture part so i'm going inside the database and let's see what a multi tenant data container means mdc stands for multi tenant data container i'll i'll explain what a multi tenant is what a tenant is what a data container is as we go along okay so let's take one system okay so any traditional system will have a storage okay which is our database which can be sap hana so multi tenant let me before i begin multi tenant mdc concept was introduced in hana 2.0 it was not available in earlier versions of hana so this is entirely new this is hana 2.0 where they have introduced the multi tenant data container system okay so this particular system on the on your left hand side may represent a sap hana 1 version okay so it can be anything so it has a storage it has uh, the underlying operating system and the hardware which is necessary okay it can be cloud as well okay and uh, we have the traditional database so database it can be hana 1.2 now on this particular system i want to deploy two applications say fiori and crm okay i want to deploy these two applications onto my database so what are the different ways i can connect these two applications to my database okay so one way of doing it is creating two schemas inside my database and uh, and assigning one schema to each of the applications okay so instead of schemas you can take two different database which can lie on top of the same storage and hardware and assigning it to the application that is one more approach but there are a lot of shortcomings with this particular approach right so let me let us look at what are the disadvantages by following this kind of approach this is never followed this is a conception and this is never followed because of the shortcomings so let's see so it is not scalable at all okay you cannot scale independent applications or you cannot scale the database without impacting the applications so scalability question scalability is out of the question when you take this kind of approach okay it is not possible to back up separately so you as the database is one okay there are only two different schemas okay schemas are nothing but folders okay so it, if you can relate it to I, i'll come to schemas in detail when we uh, uh, look into the hana uh, okay when we get into the database and when we create our own schemas so you will understand more so schemas are nothing but folders which are assigned to a particular application for 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 here so it is assigned to fiori one is assigned to crm you cannot back it up separately so if i want to refresh fiori i cannot do that right i have to refresh crm as well which is not desirable so i should have independent control on my applications how it runs right so which if this approach you cannot do that 
the policies and customizations cannot be done separately. So if I want to apply a password policy onto the Fiori database, I cannot do that. That password policy or that customization is applicable to both. So suppose if I want to have a 10 character long password for Fiori and a six character long password for CRM on the database side, I cannot have that kind of flexibility when I take this approach. Okay, so it has to go hand in hand, which is non-desirable again. Okay, and last but not the least, it is not a suitable for our cloud environment. Okay, this is not at all suitable for our cloud environment. Uh, we will see why it is not suitable when we understand the suitable mechanism, which is the multi-tenant data container. So to overcome all these demerits of this kind of an approach, SAP came up with uh, the MDC architecture. Okay, as you can see on the screen, so we have the same kind of storage. Okay, this is HANA 2.0. We have the same kind of OS and supporting network or supporting hardware. Then we have a HANA 2.0 system. Okay, and the database is having sectors of its own called as tenants. Tenant, just go by the dictionary meaning, you are renting out a space to a different person, right? So your database itself, is divided into different database. These are not schemas, okay? Schemas live within the database. Now, the tenants are a database on its own. You can have multiple tenants inside the HANA system, which will function separately when you need it. That is the beauty of it. So it can separate, it can operate as one if you want it, or it can operate independently if you want it. I'll explain what is that. So you have multiple tenants, onto the database. So uh, for example, I have taken two tenants and I deploy two different applications on it. So suppose there is a system database by default, which controls the tenant functionality. Okay, system database is always one and you will have multiple tenant databases inside. Okay, so if you want to apply something which is applicable for all tenants, you apply it on the system database. If you want to have customization only for one particular tenant database, you can go ahead and update the tenant database so that is how you get the freedom of applying or overcoming all the negativity from the previous model which you have seen right so you get two different databases you can apply your password policies it is definitely scalable and it supports the cloud architecture as well. when i say cloud architecture cloud is a distributed system and this model of distributed tenant database fits perfectly into the cloud model so that is how this is compatible with the cloud environment which sap has or you can take any cloud for that matter so it is it is totally compatible with the cloud okay so any any questions on this one so although let me let me just give you a disclaimer this is a need to know information we will know this we will get in depth about the multi tenant data container although it is a basis activity so uh, it will be an add on for you Okay, anything else you want to know about this? Any questions you have regarding multi-tenant data containers? So how many uh, like uh, uh, multi, as of now it and is connected many? to Fiori and CRM. Yeah. So uh, is there any uh, maximum numbers like based on the data, I mean uh, database. So how many we can no. connect into? Uh, no, there is no limit. So when you are designing a tenant, you can design what memory it should have. Okay, how much part of your actual database should take up, should be taken up by the tenant. You can decide that. You have the control on de deciding the size, the sizing of the tenant database is under your control. And there is no limitation on the number of tenants you can have. The only limitation is the entitlement which you have on your database. So whatever size your database is, you can divide it into as many sectors as you want. It is like partitioning your, your computer. You can have n number of partitions or you can have one partition, it's up to you. So uh, that is completely depend on uh, database, right? I mean, the store, I mean, uh, value of the database. Yes, so you have the control of what your size of the database should be. Yes, you have that control and it is dependent on the total size of my HANA system. Okay, thank you. Why can't we have a standalone for each of the systems? Why you have to have it in the 
multi-tenant style? Definitely, that's a very good question. So most of the clients opt for what you said, right? They have different system for different applications. So that is what you see in our uh, uh, current corporate world today. So you have, you don't have, you don't make full utilization of multi-tenant system. So this is an extended option available for uh, smaller clients, which cannot afford different system for different applications. You can definitely go with that, but multi-tenant is a add-on facility available for smaller clients where they cannot afford multiple database systems for multiple applications. Although if you're working in a, in a corporate world today, you will see one database for one application. You will not see any tenants. Okay. So basically this is required for saving the cost. Exactly. Hardware so it cost. is reducing the TCO. It is reducing the TCO for the company. The, the same schema is followed for uh, instead of cloud in uh, premises also? Yes. Yes. This is this goes well with on premise as well as cloud. <laughs> okay. okay, so that's about the architecture which I wanted to discuss with you guys today. So uh, let's see what a S4 HANA means. Okay, what is HANA and what is S4 HANA? Okay both are two different things let me tell you this so you may want to know the differences between hana and s4 hana there is no similarity in the first place where you can point out the differences right sap hana is a platform it is a database whereas s4 hana is a suite okay which uses sap hana as a database along with the applications which are bundled together as a suite so it is similar to our ecc which is the next version of ecc right it is S4 HANA suite. So S4 HANA is marketed with Fiori as a face of it and HANA as the database. So HANA will act as our uh, backend, Fiori will act as our front end. It has a lot of new applications which are designed by SAP. Like you can name a few, if I want to name a few, there, are, there is simple finance, there is simple logistics, which will be replacing FICO, right? FICO is something which was relevant to ECC. Now we call it simple finance. Right, simple finance, all these fancy words will come into act. Simple finance, simple treasury, simple logistics, EWM, all these are bundled into a suit, uh, bundled into a suite and put uh, in front uh, with the name S4 HANA suite. S4 is business suite four. That is what the full form is business suite four with HANA as the backbone of it. Okay, any any questions about the introduction on the whole? Any questions about or any any problems with the way I deliver it? This is the time for you to know. Yeah, the good. I think, um, yes, Chima. Yeah, when you go. Uh, no, the thing is, yeah, obviously there are a lot of questions on S4 HANA uh, thing. Mm -hmm. So what I just... Uh, wanted to see is probably a diagram between what is existing um, existing software that we have on the SAP. So it looks like, see, SAP started with a diverse uh, one, and then they got merged into one thing, R3, right, where we have all the modules. And looks mm -hmm. like when you said as for HANA, logistics is different, Pico is different, simple finance and all that. It looked like, mm -hmm. again, a, a divergence uh, style. I mean, probably no. SAP is trying to adapt or something like that. <laughs> That's a good question, but it is not the case. So it was never in a complete package. So you may see it as a complete package in ECC R3 versions, but let me tell you, it was never a package. So it is what you pay for. They will bundle it and they will give it to you. So if I want to buy an ECC uh, suite, I need to tell them what I need in that suite. Suite is like a suitcase, okay? So you tell them what I need to fill in that suitcase, they will bundle it and they will give it to you. S4 HANA suite is exactly the same. So if you want uh, a simple finance or a central finance, if you want logistics, they will bundle it and they will customize it for the client and they will give it to you. This is not a diversified system. It was always like this. So suite, when it when I say suite, that means there is an empty suitcase, okay, with HANA database inside it, Fiori as the face of it, 
and a empty suitcase which you can fill as per your requirement so if you want central finance if you want simple finance if you want logistics you just tell them they will fill it in and they will deliver it to you so it will be like uh, again the uh, one system that where i log in and i will be able to have access to all the things it depends um, it depends on how many databases uh, yeah uh, i mean how, how big is your org is and how you want exactly. to go about the implementation like right? see because exactly. why i'm asking this question is see now no more crm right we go with c4c mm -hmm. now um, mm -hmm. so uh, coming to again finance seem to be a, a, i mean where a lot of people are as we said finance, i mean i i really don't know where that mm module goes that is a logistic one it is what you are talking about mm -hmm. or, uh, or the names are probably no, names different are names and names are different bifurcation is different now earlier you used to have project systems uh, jva everything is bundled into simple finance so there is a lot of uh, uh, shuffling going around but when you when you talk about the modules these are not the packages which are sold the packages mm. when i say a package okay it is fury fury is a package right so central finance it sits on top of our s4 hana suite itself right so mm. what you have to do this is s4 hana is a empty plate okay so you can fill it with fury as well i'm not saying fury is deployed Uh, we will get into those deployment options later but you can have a separate system for central finance or a simple finance or you can have finance logistics uh, warehouse management everything bundled into our s4 so it it's totally up to you it's totally up to the client how they want to utilize uh, the underlying hardware or the underlying cloud yeah yeah okay. that that i understood yeah that, that's fine i think we'll probably get more details later on so sure so uh, i coming to your question so when you go into the hard when you when you go into administering a, a database you may see multiple system listed in your corporate world right so every system i i believe your question stems from there am i right yeah i mean uh, obviously we will see multiple systems see for example uh, i mean uh, whatever that as i said right you i have c4c and r3 is upgrade and r3 runs probably two three modules on it mm -hmm. and uh, then we may have something uh, something else actually one org may be running on c4c other may be running on salesforce probably we, we want to have, have an integration and whereas my backend is still an sd okay mm -hmm. so that's quite possible i mean nowadays nowhere we have a pure system it's all heterogeneous we probably have to coexist with other environments and uh, other e enterprises enterprise softwares i mean um, so yes. it's quite natural nowadays and and uh, to be able to uh, seamlessly connect these systems together uh, mm. that's kind of thing where i was coming so where i was wanted i mean the more drive is towards i mean earlier we had that netweaver mm -hmm. where we have mm -hmm. all this on top of it uh, the uh, that was a platform that time so mm. so on top of it we were building all the systems and also the bi i mean that's another question i had like no i mean mm -hmm. in this s4 where is the uh, the warehouse or the intelligence business intelligence BI. thing is bi coming from and the bob j how it is been again incorporated for the reporting so okay so as uh, yeah i'll answer those i'll answer those so you need to understand we are talking about the database here okay so you can have bi on s4 okay you can have bw on s4 you can have anything on s4 and you can have different s4 databases for different applications okay bi on hana is a current trend in the market so you can have your business intelligence with the backbone as the hana database right it sits right on top of s4 hana or it sits on right on top of hana if i if i have to say so the suite when you say uh i'll come back to that point again so you can put anything on to the database okay so it's how you uh, administer your database into providing you the highest performance possible right if your organization is huge okay and your business intelligence has to run separately without any hurdles you have a database for its own right bi can sit on top database you need to you need to forget the application part and concentrate on the underlying database which runs the engine right so bi can sit on top of hana okay your simple finance or whatever modules you just name it it can sit on top of hana similarly fury can also sit on top of hana 
there is no limitation on what applications you can come and uh, make a seat for itself in on the hana database right but the way the the the, the way they distribute the system differs from client to client so if i want to have separate database separate suite for uh, or separate database for one particular entity which is highly used say fiori so i want every user to have fiori as their front end they don't want sap gui uh, to be their front end then definitely they will go for a different hard different database altogether right so the load on that system so it's all about uh, cost of ownership so how we want to reduce the cost of ownership without compromising on the uh, the speed or the efficiency of the system so when you say bi bi also has a place and bi ohana works seamlessly yes yes yeah so yeah that's fine and thank you so much ragu yeah the, uh, we will probably look into more details later definitely that is something because here when you said hana is a um, is a kind of we, we are kind of eliminating the application layer right correct uh, so so you i mean earlier we said that hana i mean earlier if you take os db and application layer and the front end is gui so if you mm. imagine the old traditional style of sap if we take it and now mm. looking at the new one whereas hana just not a database it is more than a database right, right? And because we, we so is that is the reason it is called s4 hana s4 hana is just not database it's more than that no no is it no. so s4 hana don't confuse s4 hana with hana hana is what i called as a platform s4 hana is just the plain suitcase okay it's just the suite which is provided it's the packaging it's how the marketing is done with the name of s4 hana s4 is for embedded sap a business suite four but that is the full form so it has hana inside it so it's the suitcase which has hana inside it so hana itself is a platform so uh, the integration part it comes into picture when you have when you deployed these different applications on two different databases then you may have to integrate it okay if not okay. the integration will be seamless you just have to put some connectors and just connect your bi to s4 it's as simple okay. as that okay yeah thank you a uh, warning warning could you please respond to the uh, chat please uh, just give me one quick minute and the server will from where the cell drive Uh, Vani, sorry, yeah. Vani, uh, Vani, could you please yeah. respond to the chat? Yeah, yeah, I'll look into it and uh, respond. Yeah, and uh, can you say tea? Can you say tea? DB user. Ravi. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Hello, Ravi. Uh, there is a lot yeah, of questions uh, from your side. No, no, I'm, I want to ask one question. That's why I'm unmuted. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, Ragu. Ragu, if Fury apps means uh, it's a different apps for uh, Hana also, uh, because all this as of now you discuss all modules and systems that Fury apps are available in the library. I know that, but uh, any difference in Fury apps for Hana database also? Uh, database, uh, I'll, I'll dwell more into it when we look into Hana DBA cockpit. Okay, Hana DBA cockpit is modeled on Fury, but uh, if you go into the Hana apps library, Fury apps library. You may not have uh, the direct visibility of database maintenance from the Fury apps, but our DBA cockpit it's modeled on Fury itself. We will we will see that. Definitely a good question. We will see into it okay. when we look into Hana DBA cockpit. Okay. Okay. And uh, and nowadays um, uh, normal S4 Hana systems and simple finance they are using in addition to that our. uh world application also there for that also we can use this query apps right uh, just like fiori. grc how you how we are using for grc uh, query apps also like that normal r3 system modules also will use it query apps right fiori is not compatible unless and until you have hana as the database that is yes, the with hana database only hana database yes, only we are can, using we can have fiori still, we can have fiori uh, with any application okay i see a lot of things on fury so fury will be interesting any any, any more questions? Only, yeah. 
nowadays nowadays we are looking for pre apps on yeah. connecting yes. to every system and everywhere i understand but uh, it is it is at most important that you know how the internal functions of the database is yeah 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 that's not hey uh, ragu that triggers another question like uh, mm-hmm. i think fiori is uh, still doable right with the regular uh, architecture also regular database too with the odata service when you have it is it is i will uh, i will explain myself so it is applicable but you will not get the full functionality of fiori you will not be able to Uh, realize the full power of fiori because the number of apps are restricted when it comes to traditional database or hana 1. or hana or any other database when you say for that matter so the power of fiori is very very limited when you have it for ecc i do, i not seen a client who will go for fiori but not for hana okay there yeah are, there, are, there are examples <laughs> yeah to what we think but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah i, I i get that i mean it's a limited uh, um, applications that you can launch on to the uh, regular one Correct. on the fiori end um, so but yeah thing, maybe yeah one more thing i want to tell you when you implement fiori on top of say uh, ecc you don't have the mobility right you you we won't be able to realize how mobile fiori is and how it can distance you from your regular workstation so that is you cannot realize that without having yeah that. yeah currently we kind of use only for few approvals and all that right now yes. in the current system so that is probably for the higher level um, uh, management folks correct correct yeah. and we have stingy clients everywhere <laughs> so we don't want yeah. to go uh, with the full fledged solution which is available yes yeah yeah yes okay so uh, okay that what, what is the regular what, what, what is the regular class timings uh probably you, suresh can answer that yeah that we'll discuss uh, after the session okay. oh, so could so you that, please uh, walk through the course content also ragu i actually did that uh, in the beginning of the session but i'll do that again not a problem ragu and another thing is like is it like i mean obviously right i mean uh, any new implementation i agree that we will probably go with the hana if somebody wants to go there but otherwise mm-hmm. what about all the existing applications how easy or hard is the migration how that goes i mean we didn't see any of those or touch upon mm, those we are, we areas are, we are not touching we are not touching on those things we are not touching upon the migration part we are only concentrating on hana security not the migration part which is a totally a basis operation so i can give you a perspective of how difficult or how easy it will be to migrate in terms of security but not the actual migration that is not part yeah of so i mean if not the other thing because see i mean uh, as a uh, as person right now into the industry we cannot go mm-hmm. back and say okay you migrate after that i'll come and work for you probably they will ask us that see we are into the migration for how are you going to contribute or something like that that will be definitely is, helpful as a security consultant yeah. what i can tell them like i mean right see this okay. is what uh, you are right now because whatever is an r3 or regular systems we know how wo- things work but mm. if uh, how we have to take without them losing this existing things or then uh, implementing it to the new environment what is that a security okay. per- consultants role will be there probably something okay, like so that i have been in the situation which you talked told you talked about so there is zero contribution from us i am being very blunt and honest there is zero contribution in the decision making when it comes to security from a traditional db to a hana db okay we come into picture only when because we are talking about two different environments altogether there is no migration it, it will become something <coughs> sorry for that something out of the box right so what a security consultant can do is he need to set up a system all together okay but uh, if you if i if i think that you are asking at the application layer level then there is no difference which which comes into play when you are migrating from an ecc to an s4 environment right so it is just like any other upgrade okay if you are putting up a service patch okay sp020 or whatever service patch if you are upgrading it is similar to that the application layer security is not changing at all 
okay so the application okay. layer remains the same only the database you are migrating from x to a right it's two different world altogether so you need to set up everything there is no migration over here okay the migration okay. is not done by the security consultant we are only modeling it so the migration will be done and our contribution is zero for that migration when it comes to database security okay so so you mean to say that my existing roles and other authorization structure uh, will be intact and uh, i'll be able to use it in s4 is it is it when, something when that i can role are you talking about the application role the pfcg role if i want to be yeah it remains the same okay and let me be clear i am not going to the application layer at all okay mm -hmm. application we are not talking about roles we are not talking about derived user creation pfcg su24 su25 no i am only concentrating on the database security part of it because when i say this the application security remains intact okay, okay. i am only going into the application when it comes to pori i will not even log into sap gui when i am uh, going through the s4 hana security part we will only work on hana cockpit okay hana uh, studio and the dba cockpit or whatever we have the tools which i'll be explaining it okay sure yeah okay so this is the integral part of a security consultant these days this is from like past four years this is what the expectation is right so application you already know database you are not aware of until sap hana came into picture right we were not even touching the database till now now we are expected to deliver so many things on the database so that is something new and that is that is what this course is designed to address right so if you look at somebody asked me uh, to go through uh, uh, the agenda so this is what we are going to cover so we will we just finished through the introduction we will uh, dwell deeper into the tools of hana sap hana studio dba cockpit cloud cockpit web id application life cycle management is a is a tool which is available but i will be explaining it in when it when you come to transport how we are going to manage it's a, it's a separate portal altogether uh, we will deep dig uh, deep uh, dig deeper into the technicalities with the information views we will look at the types of information views analytic attribute calculation we will look into the privileges how what makes up hana security okay so privileges roles types of privileges types of roles uh, what are the user management attributes what are the user management things which comes into play we will also look into transport management system okay we will look at basic troubleshooting or basics day in and day out activity of a security consultant which he has to perform on the hana db so this is what the course material is for sap s4 hana okay when it comes to fiori this is what it is so we will dig deeper into the application part so uh, this is where our application kicks in we will see how a fiori tile can be modeled what are the different ways of deploying a fiori system how it can be deployed what can be used what can be uh, suggested to our clients to go with okay so uh, we will see at the launch pad the designers we will see at the types of apps which are available what is provided by sap what you can model although we do not create any apps on fiori it is always created by the ABAP team because UI5 is a separate thing altogether. We, we don't dwell into UI5. UI5 is the, the programming which they do. Okay, so they will create the apps and we come into picture when the app is ready, we have to configure it. We need to put it in a catalog. We need to put it in a group. We need to put it in the PFCG role. We need to map it to our S4 system or the HANA. It depends on the deployment again. So we will look at all those complexities which involves designing or designing or modeling a fiori app right we will look into catalogs we will group look into groups we will look we will see what is a gateway server we will see what a front end back end server is we will see how we can trace we will see the o data concepts we will see how to analyze trace we will look at the new t codes in fiori how we can use it to our maximum ability is that uh, clear
do you touch base on this grc12 also somewhere like uh, i think no han ajiga grc12 uses hanada one or two to this one is a different course you can talk to it is uh, some basic some no, not at all not at all grc12 is a different course can you say the grc12 apps you are not going to the, the discuss no. some no. the here apps not at all not at all okay theory apps in general i'll be talking about i cannot go into details of there are like 15000 applications on theory i cannot go through all i'll take couple of examples if you want me to take a grc application app definitely i can do that but i cannot go okay. into details on grc oh, no. few 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 yeah, examples i can do that thank you examples definitely uh, i can you can pick and choose the app you want it all remains the same so the way we implement it depends on the information available so you can name any app we can go ahead and implement that okay okay so uh, okay that uh, that ends the session for today i hope you guys enjoyed it okay so this is what uh, i want you guys to do before we enter the next session okay this is very very important this will we can do it together i uh, i want to do it along with you so can you guys please install eclipse neon 3.0 okay don't go with the latest version of eclipse just go with the eclipse neon version okay please oh. make note of this okay and uh, go to this link hcp.sap.com okay and uh, you can create or register for a trial account let's do that it's very simple cp.sap.com okay the it will give you a simple form to fill up no credit card information for god's sake so yes it's very very simple just click on start a free trial here you can register for free okay just fill in <clears throat> the details any i i have already registered with my email address so i cannot do that just fill in these details and click give your you don't have to give your phone numbers you can just create a password click on submit you will see uh, the login page you have to verify your email address you will get a code to your email address you can verify it and that's it we will take it forward from there okay and also download eclipse neon okay so just search for this you will see eclipse neon 3 you just go ahead follow the simple procedure download eclipse neon the latest version of eclipse is not compatible with the cloud system for trial okay so as we are going to register for a trial account so i want you guys to install eclipse neon 3 one okay. minute huh? yeah let me download so we will uh, as i said we will start okay. by start sorry we will start by seeing what a hana studio is how i can put my hana studio on eclipse okay how i can link my system which is the trial system on to my hana studio and we will have a plain database a, a fresh slate to start with so we will start creating our own database we will start creating our own views that's how i am i have planned for this i would need your help as well um, so basically the practice will be on the sap cloud yes okay uh, so you will create your own system okay you will have your own database yeah it's a trial on yes are you going to download eclipse id for java e developers no. yes 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 i java id yes i forgot to mention that Okay. 
if you just install it, we will it see all... what we can do along with that. Yeah, it is almost 300 MB. Yes. So you can take your time. You don't have to install it now. So mm -hmm. we will look into it in the next session, how we can make use of these uh, these things which I have asked you to do. OK, so okay. that concludes today's session. Thank you, Rago. Thank Rago, you all for going. being yeah. patient. Yes. Uh, say, for example, I have multiple EC systems, like uh, three systems are uh, uh, HANA database and uh, three system for uh, Oracle database. Mm -hmm. So we can use the same query system for, to maintain uh, Oracle DB and uh, um, that means we have the systems are runs on HANA DB and we have them on Oracle database. I think I answered that you can, but the optimum performance of Fiori can only be realized on HANA. Okay. Sure. The next class, I will come up. Like I need to do that. Uh, some like I can see in my landscape. Like a few of the systems are they are running uh, with the same Fury application for the, with different uh, databases. Mm -hmm. It depends on the app as well. Uh, we will talk about it during our Fury sessions, right? So let's let's first concentrate on S4 HANA for now. Then when we come to Fury, I will tell you, you if you go to a HANA uh, Fury apps library, you will see where it is compatible. You will see the configuration. You, you can just do it on your own. So, OK, so you have the app ID. You go search for that particular app on Fury apps library. You see the yeah. configuration section and see where it is compatible. Right. So most of the apps, like 70 percent of the apps are only compatible with HANA. that too. They have specified the patch as well. So some of the apps are only applicable for 1709, right? Some are applicable only for 1610, like right? something like that. So they have uh, the, the complete power is only realized when you have HANA, be it 1609, be it 1710, whatever. But uh, when you have a different database, there are very, very few apps which you can deploy. You can see that in the config information for that particular app. Thank you, Raghu. Yep, I understood that. Yeah. And also in the PPT uh, from the from like uh, HANA DB, like you mentioned for Fury, we can uh, trace for some. We have some option to trace for that. In how, what about the HANA DB? How to trace if you have any issues? That is also I, covered. Yes, yes, that is covered. So I'll show you that. So here we get two authorization traces. At the end, we will look into how tracing is can be done on DB. Yeah, thanks, Rag. That's it. Um, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you all for being so patient uh, with me. And uh, you can give me your feedback if I'm going too fast, if I'm going too slow, if I'm not understandable, if I don't make sense sometimes. So please feel free uh, to let me know so that I can improvise along with you. Yeah, and uh, one thing, Rago, I'm not able to log into hcp.sap.com. I'm not able to browse that website. Is there anything? Uh, that... Make it HTTPS, a secured uh, protocol. Same thing. Okay, Probably you're will... using, yeah, you can try on your personal computer. So that would work. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys. Thanks for uh, joining the session. Hey, Shiva, 